their friends in Christ and members of our CKC family. A very good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you for this time of worship service. Let us worship God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we sing above all powers, above all kings, and worship the Lord. Rejected and alone like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall, and thought of me. Trampled on the ground, you took the 
God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. May we all stand and sing on a hill far away stood on old rugged cross.
Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we all say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we have come together to hear God's most holy word and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith. Please be seated. Dearly beloved, you who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and peace with your neighbor and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from now on in his holy ways, let us make our humble confession to the compassionate God that we may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. May we all say together, Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbor. We have walked in darkness rather than in light. We have named the name of Christ but have not departed from iniquity. Have mercy upon us. We ask you for the sake of Jesus Christ, forgive us all our sins, cleanse us by your Holy Spirit, quicken our consciences and enable us to forgive others that we may hereafter serve you in newness of life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, 
says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Almighty God, our merciful Savior, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters and with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. May we all stand and say the collect for today. A loving God who revealed your love to us by reconciling us to you through the death of your son and who continues to forgive all those who repent of their sins. We pray that you do not remember our sins and our rebellious ways. Rather, forgive us by your words. Your sins are forgiven so that we put off our old self corrupted by its deceitful desires and put on the new self living in holiness being kind to one another and forgiving each other through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now. We shall have the scripture portions would be read to us. Now let us have the first Bible reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verses 8 to 16. Genesis 4, 8 to 16. <clears throat> then Cain said to his brother, Abel, let's go out in the fields. <clears throat> when they were out in the fields, Cain turned on his brother and killed him. The Lord asked Cain, where is your brother Abel? He answered, I don't know. Am I supposed to take care of my brother? Then the Lord said, Why have you done this terrible thing? Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground like a voice calling for revenge. You are placed under a curse and can no longer farm the soil. It has soaked up your brother's blood as if it has opened its mouth to receive it when you killed him. If you try to grow crops, the soil will not produce anything. You will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, this punishment is too hard for me to bear. You are driving me off the land and away from your presence. I will be a homeless wanderer on the earth and anyone who finds me will kill me. But the Lord answered, no. If anyone kills you, seven lives will be taken in revenge. So the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who met him not to kill him. And Cain went away from the Lord's presence and lived in a land called Wandering, which is east of Eden. This is God's word. 
Praise, Praise be, be to, to thee, thee, O Christ. O God. May we all stand for the response to the reading. Psalm 25, 1 to 11. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. That is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love. And faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Please be seated. Now we shall have the second scripture portion would be read to us. Today's second reading is from Paul's letters to the Romans, chapter 5, verses from 6 to 11. Paul's letters to the Romans, chapter 5, verses from 6 to 11. For when we were still helpless, God died for the wicked at the time that God chose. It is a difficult thing for someone to die for a righteous person. It may even be that someone might dare to die for a good person. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. But his sacrificial death, by his sacrificial death, we are now put right with God. How much more then will we be saved by him from God's anger? For we were God's enemies, but he made us his friends through, through the death of his son. Now that we are God's friends, how much more will we be saved by Christ's life? But that is not all. We rejoice because of what God has done to our Lord Jesus Christ, who has now made us God's friends. Here ends the reading. May we all stand and sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet Thy Sound.
As we remain standing, let us have the gospel reading will be read to us. Today's gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Jesus heals a paralyzed man. A few days later, Jesus went back to Capernaum and the news spread that he was at home. So many people came together that there was no room left, not even out in the front of the door. Jesus was preaching the message to them when four men arrived, carrying a paralyzed man to Jesus. Because of the crowd, however, they could not get the man to him. So they made a hole in the roof right above the place where Jesus was. When they had made an opening, they let the man down, lying on his mat. Seeing how much faith they had, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my son, your sins are forgiven. Some teachers of the law who were sitting there thought to themselves, how does he dare to talk like this? This is blasphemy. God is the only one who can forgive sins. At once, Jesus knew that they, what they were thinking. So he said to them, why do you think such things? Is it easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your mat and walk? I will prove to you then that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I will tell you, I tell you, get up, pick up your mat and go home. While they all watched, the man got up, picked up his mat and hurried away. They were all completely amazed and praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Here ends the reading, praise be to Jesus Christ. Praise be to the O Christ. My dear friends, today we are happy that Reverend Sunil Raj is with us to bring God's word to us. I welcome on behalf of myself and of the congregation members and also the past date committee, Reverend Sunil Raj in our midst. After singing Master, speak thy servant heareth, I request Reverend Sunil Raj to bring us God's word. <laughs> Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for Amen. May be seated, please. I would like to thank uh, God for giving this opportunity and like to thank the pastor for giving me this opportunity and the entire congregation and the past eight committee members. Today's uh, lesson or the topic for today is very interesting for everybody. It is nothing but the forgiving Christ, the forgiving Christ. As we all read the scriptures, so we're going to ponder on what is about forgiveness this morning. A thinker uh, said, to err is human and to forgive is divine. 
the forgiveness of god is long suffering we see in uh, psalms 103 verse 8 that god is merciful and gracious the lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love why should we forgive why should god forgive us that's a big question in front of us why god has to forgive us why we should forgive others why god has to forgive us because that's his character that's his nature that god is a forgiving god god is a kind god and why he has to forgive us because he loves us because we are his children we see um, in genesis chapter 4 Genesis chapter 4 this incident which has happened the first murder took place in as recorded in Genesis chapter 4 Cain and Abel story we see what happened to Cain and Abel Cain killed Abel and and God comes and questions Abel uh, Cain where is Abel your brother you know very interestingly Cain uh, replies he says that what do i know am i my brother's keeper this is the response which cain gives to god you know when i was reading this this particular portion i was reading you know quite some time why did cain respond to god like this he says that you know, i do not know am i my brother's keeper to whom did he respond he responded to the almighty god the creator of heavens and earth he responds do am i my brother's keeper so arrogantly he responds right so rudely he responds there is an arrogance in cain's response to god there is rudeness in him there is a pride in cain am i my brother's keeper why do you question me like this god what do i know he wants to defend his action he just want to escape from god's presence he don't want to answer to god and he has sinned this is the first murder which is recorded in the bible and you know if if anybody is responding you know how do we how do we react we would react in a very very negative manner but here God is so gracious God is so gracious to Cain and he says God says what have you done Cain the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground this is the heart of God he says that your brother's blood is crying from the ground and what have you done this words it moved cain's heart and further on god says you have sinned and there's a consequences for the sin you will be wanderers you will not receive the blessing and cain that moment he got that realization that he has sinned against god and he repents cain said to god my punishment is greater than i can bear lord my punishment is so great that i cannot bear lord and god moved with pity god moved with compassion and he says i will give a sign that nobody will kill you i will give a sign that nobody will kill you this is the heart of god this is the heart of forgiveness of god right from genesis onwards you know we see in the scripture it is recorded the forgiveness of god is displayed to the people when david sinned god forgives him david comes and prays cries to god god i have sinned we just now we read in psalms 25 god do not remember the sins of my youth god forgives god forgives 
This is the heart of God. God wants to forgive each and every of our sin. We see in Romans chapter 5 verse 5, it says, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we are still sinners, Christ died for our sins. The forgiveness is from God. The one stop where we can go is the cross. We cannot go to any, any, any nook and corner. We cannot go for forgiveness. There's one stop. We can go to the cross. We have a great confidence that Christ will forgive our trespasses. Christ will forgive our sins because he has taken everything on the cross. He is the lamp of God which took away our sins, the entire world sin. Let's turn our Bible to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. We see there is an incident which is happening there. Jesus heals a paralytic person. This is a very familiar passage that we have read and gone through the story, this incident, for many, many times. You would have probably read the scripture for many times. So what is so special in this? Let's see. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, and Jesus is there in Capernaum, and the report has gone to several people, and people are crowding to this house. People are crowding and coming uh, to see Jesus Christ in that house. And many people gathered there, and there was no room for anybody to enter into the house. So this is the scene. Jesus in Capernaum, Jesus in, in house, and where many people are gathered there. There was an interesting thing which has happened there. There is a paralytic person. Maybe how many years he's been um, bedridden, we don't know. He's completely paralyzed. The news gone to the entire town and people are just crowding to the house to want to see Jesus Christ. There are four men, four friends of this paralytic person. They think that they are deciding, they decided, let's carry this person. Let's carry our friend to Jesus Christ. So they carried, how did they carry? They just carried from the bed. Just imagine to carry a person from uh, for uh, 30 feet or 40 feet is very difficult. For this person, he's been carried by these four friends. They carried the entire bed to Jesus Christ. And they carry and they come to this house where there is no room. They are not able to enter into this house because there are a lot of many people are gathered. Probably they would have begged Come on, dear friends, please leave some place. You know, we are carrying our real friend. You know, we wanted to take it to Jesus. Jesus can heal this person. But people are not listening because everybody wants to see Jesus. Everybody wants to listen to Jesus. Everybody wants the presence of Jesus Christ there. These friends, they did not leave there. They did not lose the faith. They just want to do something now or never. That is the heart they had. That's the faith they had. They are thinking, what should we do? What should we do? They thought for a moment and they went to the terrace. They went upstairs and they saw the roof, the tile. They removed the tile. They removed the roof. And what they did is that they, they tied the rope and put him down where Jesus was there. And Jesus sees, everybody are so astonished. And Jesus sees these people, faith, he was amazed by the faith of these four people who are putting this friend down with this bed. And he saw their faith. Jesus was moved. And he saw this person is coming down on this bed, lying on this bed, without any hope. And everybody's eyes on Jesus, everybody's eyes on this paralytic person who's lying on the bed. Now everybody are there and they are thinking what Jesus is going to do. Probably they would have thought that you know, Jesus will say, now why, why did you break this roof? Probably people are thinking that you know, the, Jesus will respond in a very, very different manner. Why, why did you come here? I cannot do anything. I'm not a doctor. Why did you come here? Probably people 
are thinking in a different different angle but jesus looks at this person and this person only looks at jesus christ his only vision is on jesus christ who this paralytic person he is not looking at anything he is just looking at jesus christ what jesus can do but his only hope is on jesus christ he is not able to utter a single word there is no record in the bible that he spoke his only vision his only eyes is on jesus christ and jesus sees a situation a paralytic person he didn't say my dear son you have been healed get up and walk no jesus did not say that you know the first response to this person jesus gives is your sin is forgiven my son your sins are forgiven and the teachers of the law the scribes are asking in their heart in their they are questioning in their heart who is this man who can forgive sin is speaking against god who is this man who can forgive sin this exactly if i was there i would have also questioned this who is this man to forgive sin yet yeah, jesus jesus knows what is the intent of their heart he says why do you question like this why do you question like this the son of man has authority to forgive sin Jesus he is claiming that the son of man has authority to forgive sins that means i have the authority to forgive sin because i am the son of god i am god here to forgive sin and jesus moves on to say that which is easier to say that get a, take up your bed and walk which is easier to say everybody thought this man is suffering what what the last thing can jesus can do is that to heal this person but jesus only saw the core issue of this person the core issue of this person is the sin because of his sinful nature because of the sin this condition has come to this person is paralyzed is paralyzed because of his past sin only jesus identified jesus identified the core root issue of this person and jesus said you are sin your sins are forgiven the moment when the sin has taken away there is a great hope which has come to this person a great revival has come to this person a great faith has entered into this person and jesus says son your sins are forgiven and take up your bed and walk and immediately this person took up his bed and he walked people were amazed to see ah we have never seen such things which has happened my dear god's people when we come to god and every sunday when we come to prayer when we come to church the pastor says let's examine our heart every single moment when we examine our heart before god am i a sinner what sins i have done if i conceal my sins there is no forgiveness there is no blessings that's what scripture says when i confess my sins and god is just he will forgive our sins it's recorded in first john 1:9 He is faithful and just he will forgive all our unrighteousness and he will make us clean because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin only Jesus Christ can forgive all our sins my dear god's people what can we do the first and foremost thing is that accepting that i am a sinner admitting that i am a sinner i need a savior when we admit when we admit that god i have done so and so and repentance repentance is change of mind i would say that is 180 degree change of mind lord i have done this i will not do it again when we admit when we confess when we repent and god is so gracious to forgive all our sins and there is one more great challenge when god can forgive our sins there is great responsibility for us to forgive other sins 
we need to forgive other sins we say in our daily daily prayer lord's prayer god forgive us sins as we forgive those who sin against us is a great responsibility when god has forgiven us we have a great responsibility that we need to forgive other sins in matthew chapter 6 verse 14 says if you do not forgive other sins god will not forgive our sins god is so clear in telling that there is a story also jesus says that when a man he goes to the king the debt huge debt and the king has mercy on this person he says okay so i will forgive you you don't have to clear i have cleared you you can go he goes out of the palace and few thousands of rupees you know when uh, he, he has to pay then somebody has to pay to him what he does he puts him in jail and the king hears what he does he says i have released your sin i have released your debt why can't you do why can't you do the same exactly the same challenges before us when god has forgiven my sins who are we not to forgive other sins let's pray heavenly father a great hope you have given to us that you have taken all our sins on the cross and you have forgiven our sins and lord is a great it's a great responsibility that when you have forgiven our sins give us the heart to forgive other sins lord in the name of jesus we pray human is error forgiving is divine we have a lord who forgives all our sins so that we will also forgive others and reach out his to div- his divinity thank you reverend sunil raj for that meaningful sermon given to us and may god continue to bless you and use you for his glory amen may we all stand and of our faith the nicene creed we believe in one god the father god almighty maker of heaven and earth all that is seen and unseen we believe in one lord jesus christ the only son of god eternally begotten of the father god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he became incarnate from the virgin mary and became truly human for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end we believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets we believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen please be seated let us intercede with god for each prayer congregation are requested to pray lord have mercy for the peace that is from above and for the salvation of our souls let us pray to the lord for the peace of the whole world for the welfare of god's holy churches and for the union of all let us pray to the lord for our bishops and all other ministers especially the most right reverend dharmaraj razalam our moderator and right reverend dr prasanna kumar samuel our bishop and the moderator of the church of north india and the metropolitan of the mathoma church that with a good heart and a pure conscience 
they may accomplish their ministry let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the president of our republic mrs draupadi murmu the prime minister mr narendra modi the governor of our state mr thawarchand gehlot the chief minister mr basavaraj bommai and all those who serve in the government let us pray to the lord for the sick the suffering the sorrowful and the dying let us pray to the lord for the poor the hungry the orphans and the widows and them that suffer persecution let us pray to the lord for ourselves and all his servants who confess the name of christ that we may show for the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light let us pray to the lord that with all his servants who have served him here and are now at rest we may enter into the fullness of his unending joy let us pray to the lord almighty god the fountain of all wisdom who knows our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking we ask you to have compassionate upon our infirmities and those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask but save to give us for the worthiness of your son jesus christ our lord amen now let us have the church announcements greetings and welcome you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ we are very glad to have you all worshiping with us here this morning we look forward to your continuing fellowship in the days to come we thank reverend sunil raj for bringing god's word this morning thank you pastor kindly join in the fellowship coffee after the worship service members celebrating their birthdays this week on the 5th of march mr jayant gunashekar mrs malin rita clifford mr j wasikar jay singh and mrs stella amma on the 6th of march mr prasanna kumar devaya on the 7th of march mr arun nb on the 8th of march dr john ebenezer and on the 10th of march mr danish david may the good lord bless them and keep them safe in his grace all are invited for the weekly bible study and prayer which is conducted by our pastor every thursday evening at 6:30 pm should you have any prayer requests drop them in the prayer request box kept at the entrance of the church the lenten meditation service will be held this friday the 10th of march at 6:30 pm we request the congregation to participate and be blessed job vacancy available at united theological college we request the congregation to look at the notice board for further details the total offering from last sunday service amounts to rupees 58950 rupees we thank the congregation for your generous offering the next sunday's service will begin at 8 am followed by the service in canada at 9:30 am during the service we will be meditating on the theme the accepting christ thank you as we bring our offerings and tithes before god may we stand and sing alas and did my savior bleed
let us pray our most gracious and loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you for giving us forgiveness for giving us at an opportunity to examine ourselves and move forward in our faith journey thank you lord for the privileges that you are giving to us and also lord give us a mind to forgive others so that we will continue to reach you reach to the perfection lord as we come before you humbly before your throne of grace we bring before you our offerings blesses and offerings that we brought before you everything belongs to you o oh lord and ordain us so that we will also be used for your glory we pray o oh master for all those who are celebrating their birthdays and continue to celebrate their birthdays in the days to come bless them abundantly o oh lord thus far you've been so faithful have been granting them joy and meaningful life and you are god who brings fullness in their life continue to grant them health and strength peace and joy and continued purpose in their life so that they will experience your divine blessings and live as your witnesses we also pray for each and every one o oh lord remembering your great mercies and grace who offered you a special offerings bless each and every one bless all of us we ask call this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen may we all say the lord's prayer together our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us lead us not into test but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen and to god's gracious mercy and protection we commit you the blessings of god almighty the father son and the holy spirit rest and abide with us both now and forevermore amen as we uh, continue to celebrate the lord's supper may we all stand and pray how very good and pleasant it is when people of god live together in unity we who are many are one body for we all partake of the one bread now i will offer and stand sacrifices the shouts of joy i will sing and make melody the peace that comes from lord be with you all wherever we are shaking our hands and saying namaskaram we will share our peace the peace of god be with you let us sing and prepare ourselves for the breaking of the bread just as i am thy own to be at which time the offer will be collected for the poor fund
let us pray holy god through your dear son has consecrated for us a new and living way to your throne of grace we come to you through him unworthy as we are and we humbly ask you to accept and use us and these are our gifts for your glory all that is in heaven and earth is yours and your own we give to you amen please be seated may we all pray together be present be present oh jesus you good high priest as you were in the midst of your disciples and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread who lives and reigns with the father and the holy spirit one god world without end amen the lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to our lord god it is indeed right and our duty and our yes joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you o lord holy almighty and everlasting god through jesus christ your son our lord through whom you created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them and made human kind in your own image and when it had fallen into sin you redeemed it to be the first fruits of a new creation therefore angels and archangels and with the company of heaven we loud and magnify your glorious name ever more praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory glory be to you o lord most high blessed is he that has come and is to come in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest truly holy truly blessed are you o god our savior who of your tender love towards human kind gave your only son jesus christ to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his own oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and instituted an in holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again in the same night when he was betrayed took bread and after having given thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and after he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me amen your death o lord we commemorate your resurrection we confess and your coming we await glory be to you o christ therefore o lord our god remembering the precious death and passion and glorious resurrection and ascension of your son our lord we your servants do this in remembrance of him as he commanded until his coming again giving thanks to you for the perfect redemption which you have brought about for us in him we give thanks to you we praise you we glorify you o lord our god and we most humbly ask you o merciful god to sanctify with your holy spirit us and these your own gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break may be the communion of the whole body of Christ and the cup which we bless the communion of the blood of Christ grant that being joined together in him we may all attain to the unity of the faith and may grow up in all things and to him who is the head even Christ our lord by whom and with whom in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory be yours o god almighty world without end amen May we all say the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your own manifold and great mercies. You are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood and that we may evermore dwell in him 
and he in us. Amen. When we break the bread, do we not share in the body of Christ? When we lift the cup, do we not share in the lifeblood of Christ? O Lamb of God, the taker away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. The things of God for the people of God as the congregation coming to the Lord, I request all the children before that to come and take your sweets, please. Please come forward to the table of the Lord with faith.
having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of the Lord, may we all stand and give thanks. May we all say, O oh, gracious God, you have fed us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. You have assured us in these holy mysteries of your favor and goodness towards us. And that we are living members of the body of your Son and aids of your eternal kingdom. For these great benefits we thank you. And in union with your Son we offer you ourselves as a living sacrifice. And now Lord send us out to do the work you have given us to do. To love and serve as a faithful witness of Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. In closing, may we sing, Now thank we all our God. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us both now and always. Mm -hmm.